Hi right, guys, welcome to the Clack Shack, and I'm going to be doing this video tonight entirely with the laptop here that's in the, the shack out here I use for my engraving. I've got my new capture software, trying to get my money's worth out of that stuff, and I uh, had a bunch of people ask me, I shared a picture the other day of my hat that I've made, and the webcam that's built in this thing is very crummy, but anyway, I, you know, maybe you can get a better picture of it later, but I built a hat patch, and in the process, I had to do a lot of research to figure out how to do, do the steps. And I had attempted it a couple of times, but, but tapped out because I did not know the shortcuts. But now that I know the shortcuts, it doesn't take me long at all to turn these patches out. Uh, I, think I, I think that the folks that do these things, is kind of a guarded secret for them. And, uh, but it is super, super easy once you figure it out. So if you stick around for a few minutes, I'm going to get my screen pulled up and pull up my template. And we'll go over the steps that I use to create this patch and show you uh, how to create your own. So stick around for a few minutes. All right, guys, this is the uh, file that I used to create this hat. And I'm going to move this thing where you can kind of see a little more what's going on here. Uh, but that is the file. And before we get into anything else, I'll go ahead and throw out my settings so everybody can look at it. This is the exact file that I used to create this hat with. And I have my speed set to millimeters per second. So if you run millimeters per minute or whatever, you're going to have to do a little math. But if you want to jot these down right quick, snap a screenshot, whatever you want to do, now would be the time to do it. Uh, because I don't, I don't want to forget to do this. So I figure if I do it in the beginning of the video, when people start asking, it, it's here. So grab yourself a screenshot, whatever you need to do. But those are my settings for the leather engrave. The speed was 50. Uh, millimeters per second at 100% power output uh, that little uh, line that you see uh, the blue one that is actually just basically a little scratch line and I'll explain that here in the video in just a minute and then of course the leather cut uh, the leather cut I ran four uh, millimeters per second 100% output and leather is tough and I understand why they make gloves and boots and things like that out of it uh, it was harder to cut than the four and a half millimeter wood that I'm used to working with. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that I got a really clean cut so I didn't have to do any, you know, touch up or trimming. And so I run that for five passes. Now, that's all this is done with my air assist on because I don't run it without it now that I've got it on there because I'm afraid it's going to cause some uh, clogging issues. And I paid a lot of money for my air assist, so I figure I might as well use it. And so far, it hasn't hurt any of my work or engravings or anything. It appears to help them all. Uh, it helps the engraves, it helps the cut, and so, to be honest, I'm just going to run it whenever my laser is running. So anytime that anytime that I am emitting a laser, I'm going to be running my, my my air assist. But those are the settings. So if you want to file that away, like I said, screenshot it if you must. You know whatever you want to do, but that's the settings that I use to create this patch right here. And before we get too far into the video, I would like to remind everybody, I am not a professional. I am not, uh, I don't work for Lightburn, don't work for Xtool. Uh, I do other things for a living. This is my hobby. Uh, I do have a little bit of a experience and background in computers, but it had nothing, nothing like what's in Lightburn. So I'm not a professional. This is not the only way that you can do this. This is a way that I figured out to do it. And for someone like me with limited experience in the, you know, laser engraving, it worked. And I had a pretty good product. I like the, the, the results that I had. You know, a few of my friends have seen the hat and seen the pictures on Facebook and stuff. And everybody likes the results. And so to keep you from having to do all the background and research and stuff that I did, I figure I'll just share it with you. Because apparently how to make these patches is a very guarded secret. Uh, from, for some people uh, because every time I see somebody asking questions or whatever it's just like they get ignored uh, and of course I'm all about helping people and uh, so I'm going to show you in Lightburn how I created this file and, and there may be a thousand other ways to create this file a thousand other tools there may be better ways to do it you know I'm not arguing that I'm simply showing you the way that I accomplished this okay so let's just go ahead and put that out there but I will bring your attention to the center of the screen here. This is the file that I used to burn this patch. Okay, and as you can see, the overall dimensions of this thing is 56 by 56. That's, that's the, the whole size of the outer cut of this thing. 
And the way it's laid out is this is the cut that cuts the, the, the leather to make the patch. These little holes here are the holes that I put in the burn file to go ahead and evenly space holes in the patch so that when I went to sew it onto a hat, it didn't require me to punch holes through the leather. Uh, I figure why, while I'm running the laser, why not just go ahead and put me some holes in there. Now, I will say, I have seen folks use uh, circles, squares, lines. I've seen all types of different cuts used to accommodate sewing a, a patch onto a hat. I chose to do the circles. I kind of had a look that I was wanting to go for, kind of a, a rustic old time look. And so the circles to me, it, it just looked, it, just, it, it fit. That's what I wanted. So that's what I went with. You can do squares, you can do, you know, ellipses you can do whatever you want to do you can even just cut a line in there if that's what you prefer but i'm using circles and my little circles before anybody else asks are 1.5 millimeter let me ungroup this so i can click on one to show you but my little circles right there are 1.5 millimeter circles so height and width 1.5 millimeters and the needle, the small needle that came with my leather sewing kit that I bought off Amazon, it fits really good through that hole. The thread goes through it really nicely. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of problems with it. And so I was, I was pleased with the size of those holes. Uh, disclaimer here, it did take me about five attempts to actually get this to work and work the way I wanted it to. Uh, everything from the size of the holes, the size of the patch, uh, the burn, the bu oh my goodness. All right, guys, this is Fluffy, and Fluffy doesn't know to stay off the table when I'm working, so I'm going to have to put her over here before she starts pushing buttons on the keyboard. But, uh, but yeah, before uh, before we get into making it, that's the basic layout, guys. I mean, seriously, it is it, to, to do this patch, you have one cut, then you got a series of circles, and then your image. That's all there is to it. Oh, now she's getting up on top of the laser, so this is going to... Hang on, apparently the cats need feeding. So I'm gonna pause the camera and be right back. Okay, I'm hoping Fluffy is done. She has food, I don't know what her problem is. Uh, maybe she just wants some petting. But anyway, back to where we were. So it's very simple. Here she comes again, <laughs> oh my goodness. Fluffy, <laughs> what in the world? Okay, fine. All right guys, so Fluffy, whoa, where are you going? Where are you going? All right, so I'm gonna try to do this with a cat in my lap, guys. I'm sorry, uh, not even really a cat guy, but my youngest daughter is, and so we got cats. And now I'm getting nestled by a cat here. Uh, so where we're gonna start is I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new, a new file. So I'm gonna move this camera down just a little bit where you can see what I'm having to contend with here. Uh, so I'm apologizing if <sighs> Fluffy get down. This is not fun, guys. <clears throat> it's a real zoo around here, guys. I'm telling you. All right, a little distracting. Sorry. All right, so I am going to draw a square. Now, the patches that I'm going to do on these hats, I think this will be more of a flag or some type of decorations maybe somebody's logo or whatever but since i've already got a round one uh, y'all bear with me we're going to do a square one this go around but the process is exactly the same so i'm going to do a square one so that i'll have that because i've got a couple of designs that i want to do on a square patch so the first thing that we're going to want to do is put that square in here i'm going to assign it to layer 26 which is my leather cut all right and I'm going to make this shape because I like the 56 on my uh, round patch as far as the height in, in relation to the, the real estate that you have to work with. So I'm going to set my height to 56 and that's going to pull my, my width over to 90. And, you know, let me, let me just measure to make sure. Let me get this hat here and we'll look at what 90 looks like. So 90 is going to be four and a half times so. Yeah, 90, 90 would be a good for like a flag or something like that. I think that would be a, a, a decent size. Uh, and that, it's not too terribly large. 
So the next phase of what we're going to do, I mean, you've already got your cut here. So the next phase of what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to select this outer line here. And then I'm going to go over here to this little button, which is offset shapes. I'm going to click that offset, off, uh, offset inward. I'm going to set the offset distance to three millimeters. And what that's going to do is that's going to replicate this square, but it's going to bring it three millimeters inward into the inside right here. Okay, so the next the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy right here and where's my convert? Is it going to let me convert this one? I run into this problem the other day, and uh, so I'm going to take this line right here. Let's see if it'll let me see the nodes. Okay, there's the nodes. All right. This is kind of, a, I have learned that this is kind of a critical thing when you're doing this because if you don't, if you don't find out where this starts at, it can really jack up your, uh, your the next step. So you're going to want to go in and look at your nodes and figure out exactly where the shape starts at. And so it's, it's going to start right there where that green dot is. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add my hole for the thread. And like I said, I want my thread hole to be 1.5 by 1.5. And so then you're going to take that 1.5 by 1.5 and you're going to move it to right where this thing starts at. And I'm going to zoom in and try to get this lined up as close to the center of that as I can. So that looks pretty well lined up. All right, next step, you're going to select that circle and then select the line that we, we built, all right? And then go up here to Arrange and go to Copy Along Path. And in here, where it says Space Between Copies, I'm gonna do five millimeters and hit OK. And look at that, guys. It is like magic. When I first started trying to build these things, I nearly drove myself insane trying to perfectly space these little circles. I didn't know it had that Lightburn could do this. This is like some black magic stuff that I didn't know existed. Now, if you're OCD, I will tell you because I noticed it and I really can't figure out how to do anything about it, but whatever. The only problem that I have is if you put them at a specific shape is that the dots don't always land on the corners. That is the, the dilemma that I had with using this tool and i'm assuming that you could probably break these shapes let's try that that's the only thing that i haven't tried so what i'm going to do i'm going to find the nodes and then there's a control b all right control b all right So let's try this. Let's try breaking this shape. I'm gonna experiment a little bit during this video. Sorry about that, guys. I, but I really don't want to show y'all a way to doing this and it actually be a, a fix for it. And I just it just hit me that if I break those lines and redo that, that I might can make this work and be evenly spaced. So let me let me try this. Let's see if this works. Let's 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 experiment together, guys. All right. Copy a long path. Uh, let's try doing it this way. Or, ah, there we go. So number of copies fourteen. All right, so phew, look at that breakthrough. See, that's the way my mind works, guys. It sometimes just uh, just hits me that I can do things differently. So I'm gonna go on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. And for those of you that don't know it, uh, the way that you break these shapes is you'll select, like you click on that little red dot right there, and then you're gonna hold Control and B, and it, it, it breaks that shape. 
And so then when you go back and let's see, control and B. So now this shape and this shape are separated. So go back, click it, control B. All right, so that breaks that breaks those lines apart, so that they're not considered part of a continual uh, design, so to speak. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to go over here and copy one of these little circles, so that I ain't got to rebuild that little tiny circle. Copy that guy, and I'm going to drop that one right here. Like I said, trying to get it as close to centered as I can. All right, then I'm just gonna hold down control and I'm gonna select this top line up here. And then we did 14 on the other side. And so I'm gonna arrange along path, change that to 14. Uh -oh. I wonder if I do a minus 14 if they'll go the other way. <laughs> no, it's not going to let me. So I just start at the top. Okay, let's do this. See if this will do this one. All right, arrange. Copy along path. 14. Oh, we're going to have to do more. Get it to where I can see it. So I'm going to try to do my five on this one, see what happens. Okay. So that worked. So maybe I could have done five on that one. Uh, it appears that it set them on five anyway. So we're just going to leave that alone. All right. So I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to bring it up here to the top because apparently this one wants to go downward. Get that as close to the center as I can. All right, I'm going to select this line on the bottom, arrange, copy along path. We'll set this one at five and see what happens. Okay, so that worked. We can actually go back. And change this one. I'm gonna go back just because I, you know, guys, like I said, I can't have this side being the slightest bit different than the other side. So that worked. So we're gonna put a five here and hit OK. And just putting them in the corner. No, it didn't put them all the way in the corners. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Just gotta wait on that other one. Arrange, copy a long path, set this one to five. Er, okay, so we're gonna have to paste this one in this corner. This is a little more headache than a circle. Circle, circle's rather easy. You just kind of set the thing there and it'll do it on its own. But with this thing being square, it didn't want to. Uh, it didn't want to do my corners like I wanted them, and I was a little concerned about that. But luckily figured out a workaround. Arrange, copy along path, five. Okay. So now, I have them all, uh, have them all in there. So now we've got our little circles cut. Uh, what I do with these, there you go. I've got the, uh, I've got the lines, all the, the circles, all put in here. Uh, these little lines here, you can leave those, or you can take those out, or whatever you want to do. So I got rid of the uh, line that was in here that I broke all to pieces, and since I can't remember exactly how to weld them back together, I've decided that I am going to put that line back, but I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to select my outer cut again, 
go back to offset three millimeters and hit OK and recreate it but now it's all one shape and then later when I get a chance I'll look it up and figure out how to weld those things back together I really only wanted to know how to break them so and I'm gonna change that to a just a simple scratch line and the reason I did that is because if you watch traditional woodworkers that use the punches and the uh, presses and and the hammer and chisel looking things uh, they use uh, uh, a set of calibers and they scratch a line down through there and then they take their uh, this little thing looks kind of like a fork and they punch those holes well I kind of wanted my patch to kind of look uh, antique old and, and handmade I, I know I see a lot of these patches that are on really light leather and they're engraved really dark and, and they look cool but that wasn't the look that I was going for I wanted the rough and rugged you know darker colored leather uh, preferably something that would match my my other leather that I wear such as my boots and my belt and stuff like that and to me you know vanilla covered colored leather just it doesn't look like leather to me so but that's how you get the shape and get the design and then like I said you can put whatever you want in that guy and whatever shape you decide I need to flop that okay and I need to rotate it minus 90 so once you get the shape figured out then you can go and put your design in there. Let me lock all this together right quick so this will make this easier. Go ahead and group that. And the reason I'm grouping that is because I want to center this image in that the easy way. So as soon as I get it the size that I want to make it, and I want to make sure it's perfectly centered, what I'm going to do is select everything and then just hit my little bulls out there to get it centered. So, you know, whatever image that you choose to put in here, you can put in there and just save this as your template <clears throat> that's the way I that's the way I was able to pull mine off and get it built uh, the square one is a little more challenging than the round one when it comes to building these things because having to break the lines and put them together and all that but that's the basic principle I don't know what else to tell you about how to do it I mean that's it that's how I got the outer line outline areas that's how I got the uh, the the holes lined up and that's really all you got to do and then other than your your engraver your burn or or whatever it is that you're doing uh, but yeah that makes it very simple uh, the one that uh, I did for my hat was round because of my, my my actual logo for the shop here is round and so I went with round but I mean you, you could put this on a square uh, piece if you wanted but I just think it looks better around like that. Kind of minimalist to use less material that way. But anyway, that is uh, the designing phase of it. So I appreciate your attention. I hope this helps somebody. And for those that will be asking, because I know you're going to ask, I will drop the description. In the description, I will drop the, the specific leather that I use to accomplish this, which, you know, camera doesn't do it much justice but you can tell and I will also be dropping my little sewing kit I, I, I did this on a very slim budget uh, for the leather and the sewing kit together I'm, I'm thinking it was around 30 35 dollars or something like that the leather is not cheap but this leather here uh, is very flexible it bends really easy uh, I think the total thickness it said was uh, I don't want to lie to anybody, so let me measure it. It's 2.1 millimeters is what my little cheap set of calibers. 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. I guess it's it, you know it varies, but uh, we're gonna say we're gonna say 2.2 is probably a good estimate of of, of the average thickness of it. Uh, it is already tanned. Uh, I did learn with leather that if this is a little too dark, I did it with my hat. It was a little too dark for me. I didn't like it. So I went with some really, really fine uh, sandpaper and sanded the patch after I burned it just to kind of give it that contrast, make it look used and older, kind of distress it a little bit. And it brought the, the, the color of the, the leather down so that I got a little better contrast on the burn. Uh, it wouldn't have hurt my feelings to have gotten just a shade lighter leather, but after once I hit it with the sandpaper a little bit, 
it, it, it just made it pop. It made it look kind of old, aged, and distressed. And that was kind of the look I was going for. So I hope the video helps you. And if it does, like I said, feel free to give me a thumbs up, uh, comment, like, uh, whatever. And uh, if you're new to the channel and want to look and check out some of the other videos, I try to pass the information along as I can. Uh, as I can. So uh, stick around, check out some of the other videos, and hit that subscribe button. But thanks and have a good day.